everyone, this is Gail, and welcome to part three of my Four Seasons uh, plaque. So I hope you're going to like this when it's finished. I, I don't know what it's going to look like yet, but I wanted to, uh, this is where we ended with part uh, two. I've got something on my blue clay and don't know what it is. But I'm going to now, at this point, before we put any anything else on here, I'm going to slice this to separate. And I'm using an acrylic block just to kind of guide me. Because I knew that would happen, and I, I wanted to not have it happen... after I got leaves on it. So, I apologize. Should have done this a little bit earlier. But maybe I won't, maybe I'll just try slicing instead of running the cutter through it. And I was just afraid I wouldn't get even. With the cut, I did okay on that one. So I only have one more, so wish me luck. The background really should have been cut after I put the these colors on. There we go. So now those are cut, so they're going to be separate when we pick them up, which we don't really care right now. But the next thing I want to do is add some decorations. So what I have done is I pulled out some old canes. I have this one, which is a single rose. This is what it looked like before I reduced it. But I reduced it down to about a quarter of an inch. Then I put three of them together and reduced it a little bit more. And I think this is the size that I'm going to work with right now. So what I'm going to do... Actually, this is a little big on the end, so I'm going to cut that end off. And I'll save that for another project. So I was thinking about using these for spring. So I'm just going to cut some slices. I normally have this on in front of me and I come at it from the other angle, but I don't have room unless I move my project every time I slice something. So I'll start with those. And I'm just going to take my needle tool. And this is going to be the spring. So I'm going to start putting these. I'm going to put one at the end of each branch. Then I'll fill in around that. But this is going to be spring when the flowers bloom. What is that saying? Spring has sprung. I don't know, some, something that spring has sprung, the oh, the flowers riz, I wonder where the birdies is. <laughs> I remember that from elementary school. And I think I'll put one here just to kind of cover up where those come together. And I'll put another one up here. And 
and then let me do some of the single ones. I won't slice as many because I probably won't use as many of those. So let me just slice. And they don't have to all be the same thickness because they're not going to be sitting side by side in most cases. And I'll put the big one like along the branch. And you can put as many or as few as you want. I'll stick one in that little crevice. one there. I've only got one more. I need to use it. Now where would I put it? How about right here? But now is the time you need to start pressing the everything down to make sure that it's going to stick to your background. And that includes your branches. And I'll do it again in a minute with something else. But anyway, so there's our spring. Now you can add um, birds. You could put little birds up here. Um, I'm going to just leave it the way it is. I'm going to. I want this whole thing to be the tree branch. Now wintertime... Wintertime is going to be a challenge because there's no, around here in Virginia, there's no leaves on the trees in the winter and it's very dark and dreary. But I thought what I would do, excuse me while I just clean up my gray a little bit, I thought what I would do is maybe put, get my snowflake cane and I meant to get that out and I don't believe I did. I didn't. I'm going to have to go back and get my snowflake cane. So I'm going to skip winter. And this is fall, and I made another cane. I was going to use this one that I made before, but oh, my camera's gotten messed up. Sorry. I was going to use this one that I made before, but with this background, it would just show up as big circles on here. So I didn't want to do that. So I had a leaf cane that I managed to, let me slice the ends off so you can see what they look like. I had a leaf cane in my stash and I cut them into threes and put them together. I put I, I reduced two of them smaller and laid them on either side of the center one. So now I have that shape leaf. And I'm going to use this for summer. So I basically made a new cane. Let me see how this looks. I took this cane and I trimmed off the ecru or whatever that color is on the outside and made a new cane out of it. <coughs> I um, just reduced it down. So now this shape is in the same shape as this shape. So it's going to, I'm sorry, it's going to look like that these are the fall leaf of this one. So I hope that made sense. So let me do some slicing on this. And it's a little warm today. We have a heat advisory today, of course. We did have a week of nice weather. But it is, well, it's 79 degrees in here. I probably should turn my fan on because it's making this clay a little squishy. I 
and I'll cut more if I need it. Some of these need to be reshaped a little bit. Actually, most of them do because the clay got squishy. I'll just do them as I get to them rather than taking time. So I'll take this and I will probably do some little leaf clusters. I'll put two on the end of that one. And they don't even have to be pretty leaf shapes. I'm pressing these down as I put them on. Because you can, uh, you know, just see just by pressing with my fingers, it's taking it back out into a leaf shape. And you can do that once it's on your background if you choose to. Oh, and I'm putting them on the winter. That's not good. Because this is fall. Let me remove these. Let's see the best way. Let me get my little kidney. And I apologize for any noise. They're working on the water pipes in the road in front of my house. And it's got my dog upset and the cat upset. I can't get in and out of my driveway, so I'm kind of stuck at home today. But that's all right. It's work that needs to be done. They've been working all the way up the road. there. And one thing I thought about doing for fall, after I get these leaves on here, is cut a few and make it look like they're falling down. Wouldn't that be cute? So some of these, I don't really care if they look like leaves or not, because some of them may, may, might be dried up enough to fall. Okay, and I'll just add a few little leaves wherever I feel like I want one. Let's put one on here. So there's fall, and if I want to add some, I can. So I'm going to now make sure I, I press the winter, I mean the spring. Let me press these down. Make sure everything sticks. I didn't press the winter yet. And I'll press.
press these down. And I'm thinking I've got some I've got some texture sheets and I've also got some stamps that are wood uh, wood grain design. Where did I put my texture? This is more wavy, but I think it will do the same thing on this wood. Just to kind of press a little bit of texture in there. Can you see that? See how it added just a little bit of texture? Looks like there was some mica powder on here. I don't see it, but there must have been. But that's kind of interesting because it adds a little bit of character. But I know, like, you know, if you've got trees like I've got trees, most of the tree, the branches are not smooth. They have bark on them. But I like using these because they're clear. You can see where you've gone. little one a little bit better there and it doesn't have to be all over it you know it can be just in places I like that so see the texture now on the wood I even like that little bit of mica powder that came off on the brown Okay, so let me take a break real quick so I can find my snowflake cane and then I'll be right back. Okay, I found my snowflake cane and then I realized that my snowflake was blue instead of white. But you know, I think I'm going to use it anyway. Number one, that way I don't have to make another cane. And number two, it'll add a little bit of color to this winter section. So I'm going to just start placing snowflakes especially over places that have little imperfections like right there I'm gonna put one to cover the end of that branch if you have a spot that uh, you know something on your clay like there was a little divot there where I dug a piece out with my needle tool. I just covered it up with a snowflake. But I think this blue, instead of using white snowflakes, it kind of ties it in to the rest of the project. And I thought, I don't know, um, well, I don't want to put too many. I think that is plenty. So there we go. There is our summer, fall, winter, and spring. So I'm going to take this and put it in the oven and bake it. And then we can do a little bit more with it as far as uh, separating the tiles and putting it on something else and, you know, getting it framed. I don't know, I even know that I'm going to frame it. I might just do it just like this. I don't know. We'll see. So I will be back after this is baked. All right. 
our pieces are now, or my pieces, are now out of the oven. And this is when you start seeing all the imperfections. There's a little bit of blue on this one from the edge of my um, blade. Evidently had some blue blue clay on it when I sliced it. So I'll, another thing, always be sure to wipe your clay, wipe your blade off. But now I've got to decide what else, where or how I'm going to mount the, you know, finish our project. So thanks very much everybody. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, it's Gail butting in in the middle of your video. Just wanted to say that I ended the last part of the video saying that I was going to close that and make it part three and that I would finish it up in part four. But when I ended up getting everything finished and I was able to do it all in one day and looked at the time of the two sections, I decided I'd go ahead and put them together. So it might be a little bit long, but it'll be less than an hour. But hopefully you'll like this. So just wanted to let you know that I did change my mind and this is going to be the third and final part of the Four Seasons. Hope you like it. So I have made what I'm going to call tiles. And I, I got to looking at these. They need to be mounted. But in the meantime, I'm thinking that maybe there ought to be something behind them. Well, let me show you first of all what I'm thinking about. I have this. Everybody knows what this is. This is the back of a picture frame. And I evidently used the picture frame for something and kept the back. So I'm thinking that these would fit really well on here. And I can set it, you know, have it as a... Uh, project that just sets up. The only problem is you've got bare edges on your tiles and of course this is not very pretty. It's just cardboard. So I'm thinking a couple of different things. I'm thinking that I might uh, paint this or I could cover it in clay. Only problem is I don't know what color clay that I would use and I don't want to, it would take an awful lot to cover this. So I don't know if that's the way I'm going to go. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to put these aside. Set them over there. And I think I'm going to paint this. So I need to go get some water and, well, actually I don't need the water, but uh, I need to get my paint out. It's still over here in my paint closet. So I will be right back. Okay, I went over and looked into my, in my paint stash and I was going to paint it gold. I have this Liquitex uh, Rich Gold. But then I saw this glitter black, and I got it on clearance somewhere. Don't have a clue where. Um, could have been Hobby Lobby or Michaels or whatever. But anyway, it's glitter black. So I think I'm going to try this. I've never tried it. If I don't like it, then I will go over it in the in the gold. But let me see how this is going to look. So I don't want to get, I don't know how thick this is. Okay, it's not real thick, it's real liquidy. So let's just see what this is going to do. Well, I don't think so because that is very sheer. But I do like the glitter. 
So, what I think I'm going to do is maybe paint this black. And, I no, I think I put my black paint back. Let me get the black paint, and I'll paint it black and then put this over top of it. Okay, this is very liquidy black. You can see this is just cheap craft paint. Let me get this dried paint off the end. And I'm just going to put it into a paper plate. Because the paint palettes that I use are probably not going to be large enough for the amount of paint that I need and if there's a little bit of glitter left in the brush I don't care because I'm going to put glitter over it anyway. So I'm just going to paint this black if I didn't have that glitter I would have painted it a different color but black is a good color Especially since the back of it is black. And I'm holding it up because I want to make sure I get these edges. Because the edges do show when you've got it sitting on a table or hanging on a wall. They do show. And this doesn't have the wall hanger on it, which I wish it did. A lot of them do. I'm just putting on a good coat of the black, making sure I cover up all of the cardboard. Let me go ahead and lay this back down. There, I've finished. I'm just going to go back and touch up any little spots that looks like it didn't get covered. But I think it got covered pretty well. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside to dry. Gonna let that dry for a minute while we while I we decide what to do about the edges of this. So I'm thinking since we are covering this, laying putting this on black, that me we may want to I'm just clean it up a little few little pieces that look like there's some stray pieces that got stuck on there. Can you hear the rain? But what I'm thinking, we could cover this, we could just do a little thin rope of black. Oh, and I, I did forget to trim these edges, didn't I? But you know, I think I'm going to leave it on there. Actually, I need to trim this right here. So let me do that. When polymer clay is baked, it usually is not difficult to trim at all. So maybe I will trim this off. And I'm just going to go along the edge here. See, that trimmed off very quickly, very neatly. I am going to get it off of my work surface because I don't want it to get mixed in with any raw clay. But I was thinking, since we're going to be putting this on uh, black clay, I mean on a black background, that maybe we ought to take just a little thin uh, sheet of black to go along here. Now what I thought about was back in my extruder box, 
I think I have, I do, I have a little black disc here. See that? And it does a little flat, there you go, a little flat piece. I think I'm going to use that. And I'm going to condition some black clay. And put it in my extruder and extrude some black strips. So I will be back after I have done all that, or after I've done that. So I will be back shortly. All right, I've got some pieces here that are extruded. I've got four of them, one for each piece. Now, because this is baked clay, and I'm going to be adding raw clay, you're going to need something to make the raw clay grab. So what I'm going to do is use some, I'm, I'm going to use liquid Kato. You can use any liquid clay, but I've got liquid Kato in this little squeeze bottle. And I would just start on one side and just put a little bit, let me see, hopefully this will squeeze out. I haven't used this in a while, but it doesn't dry. See, so just put a little bit. Whoops. Okay, I was trying to remember why I wasn't using that, and it's because it leaks. I have another one, but it's got a larger head on it. But anyway, I'm just going to smooth that out. Just smooth it out with my finger. And I'm going to start on the inside bottom as my corner. Let me make sure I get this straight. I had a little bit of a raggedness there on the end. But I'm going to start there on the inside corner and just make sure it all gets stuck. Let me pull my chair up a little closer. I've gradually gotten pulled away from my table. And then I'm going to, what I may end up having to do, let me use the other one. The other one has a bigger tip, but at least it doesn't leak. I'll just have to move it quicker. And again, I'm just going to smooth it with my finger. And then just turn this corner and lay this on here. Now, this may not be quite as wide as this piece is thick, but this lower part here you're not going to be able to see. And let me get my trusty toothpick because some of it came out and got on the clay. I'll probably go around with a q-tip when it's finished. It's not, it does dry clear. It bakes clear, but it will leave a little bit of a shine. So if you don't want a shine, you're going to want to wipe it off. Let me get my Q-tips out now. There we go. And let me get the top. And I'm just going to pinch this off just so I don't have a lot of extra clay hanging around. And I'm going to just put a little bit of the liquid clay 
along there and again smooth it with my fingers and then just lay this down now this is where you might want to refine your corners make sure that it's stuck all the way around I'm going to bring this towards the front and because this is the inside bottom corner I can go ahead and trim this with a blade and you won't be able to tell just kind of push it a little bit together around that corner And then take a Q-tip and wipe off your excess because you don't want you don't want a lot of clay. Actually, this I'm going to wipe with a paper towel. A little bit is okay, but you don't want a lot on the front because, like I said, it will be a little bit shiny when it bakes. So I'm going to do this with all of the four pieces. And bake it again, and then I'll be back. All right, my four tiles are have got the edges on them and they are in the oven baking again. So now I'm going to put the glitter on top of this. And we'll see how this does. Let me take it out of the lid and let's see how this looks on the on the black and this has a little bit of a white look but this is probably like a glue base with the black glitter in it so I'm thinking when it dries, you won't be able to see the white. It'll probably dry clear. And I'm going brushing to both edges to make sure that, you know, it, it gets all covered up. And we will see how this works. I am going to go ahead, I mean, it's you can see it goes pretty fast, so I'll keep the camera rolling while I do this. But there are other things you could do. You could buy a picture frame and put a backing. You could use a pretty, um, pretty piece of scrapbook paper or wallpaper or just plain old paint. Like I said, I started to just paint this paint this gold. But when I saw this black glitter, I just thought it would add some interest. And I've never used it, so it's given me a chance to use it to see what it looks like. And I just got my arm in it. Not sure where. I don't see any smudges. And I was just thinking this would look better than just a plain black. But I think if I didn't use this glitter, I probably would have gone ahead and painted it gold.
and this is beginning to dry over here and I do see that it is drying clear so I'm okay with that so I'm gonna let this dry and wait for the pieces to come out of the oven and then we will, we will finish this up all right I've got everything out of the oven and I do believe I'm going to put a glaze on this I think it will make it look nicer uh, if you, you don't have to if you want to leave it this way but I uh, if I had used Kato clay Kato clay leaves a little bit of a sheen Primo does not Primo leaves a matte finish so I think I'm going to put some um, let me find it where did I put it I've got some Varathane oh here it is this is a gloss and it has been sitting for quite a while so it should be stirred don't ever shake it shaking it will just make air bubbles I'm going to use this brush. I'm just going to saturate my brush and then start putting it, and I'm just going to put it on the top. Now you can use any kind of glaze. You could use Sculpey glaze. Um, I understand that, um, what is it called? Diamond glaze. I understand that works. But I've always preferred the Varathane. And after I put it on, I'm making sure my brush strokes go in the right direction and I'm just going to go over all my flowers and my branches and my leaves And I think I'm going to add some stickles. If you've ever bought stickles, after this is dried, I'm going to put some stickles on it on the snow side. On the winter. Because these came out a little dull. And I'm not sure how they're going to be once I add the glaze. But I just want a little bit of sparkle. I want it to be I want it to be winter, but I don't want it to be dead looking, if you know what I mean. Okay, so there's one. And let me just see while you're on while you're on camera what the snow is going to look like. I don't know if this will help or not. I really should have used white a white snowflake, but I had forgotten that my snowflake cane was blue. helps a little bit but I still think it's going to be better it's a little something on here don't know if it was on my clay or on my brush there oh and I threw away all my 
paper towels. Always keep toothpicks handy. Because they can help with a multitude of issues. So I'm going to let this dry, and I wanted to show you how this turned out. Can you see how pretty and shiny? I'm glad that I used the glitter paint because the black was kind of a matte color when it dried. So this is going to be fun to use this for the background. So I will be back as soon as this dries, and we will mount it, and we will be finished with our project. All right, the Varathane has dried, and now I'm going to put some stickles on here. I think I'm going to put them on top of, if you, on top of the snowflakes. I don't know if you've ever used stickles before, but stickles is like a dimensional glitter paint, and as you can see. Maybe you can't. Maybe it's not close enough for you to see. Maybe. It gets real s sparkly. Now this is the Stardust Stickles. They have several different colors. And this is basically a glitter glue. But Stickles is just a good quality glitter glue. So I'm going to put it on all the on the snowflakes, and I touched over here a little bit. And I thought what I would do is probably put some along the top edge of this branch to make it look like there's snow sitting on it in any place where there's where it would be like falling from the top now yeah, that's going to look look like snow. Let's put some along here. Now it's just glitter. It's not going to be white, but I think it's going to give the illusion of snow on the branches. So I'm going to let that dry, but I just wanted to show you. I'm going to use Well Bond glue. And I'm going to, you know, center these a little bit better. But uh, I'm going to be attaching this sort of like so. Get them evenly spaced on each side. Still needs to come over this way just a little bit. And I think that's it. After I glue this on, it's going, you know, I can set it up. But this is our Four Seasons plaque. Uh, this is a the back of a picture frame that has the floor, I mean the table uh, bracket on it, so it sits on the table. But I think I may try to add something to the corners here so I can hang it on the wall. But I think that is really pretty. I'm real happy with this. So I hope you do the same thing. I hope you can make something that you have fun with. And, you know, I'd love to see pictures of it. I see another snowflake. I didn't put the stickles on. It makes the biggest difference. But I'd love to see what you make. And hopefully this will not be... Um, too big a project for you. It's going to be fun. Just enjoy yourself. Have a good time. 
So come back again next week and we will start have another polymer clay tutorial. And then don't forget, come back on Fridays for my Friday Frolics. That's where I give you a lot of my, my potential plans and things. So talk to you then. Bye-bye.